All right, Milser Garage. We're going to start with this hammer replacement. And I'm going to see if maybe I can do some editing to just edit in snippets of this process. So I know you don't want to stay with me through this whole thing. This is the screwdriver set that I use. It works good. It's those special kind of heads that you need for uh, fitting inside these... Um, these screws properly a uh, punch kit definitely gonna need that and uh, what do we do we separate so we have the barrel assembly here we have the stock here so we take those two things off what are we left with this is what we're left with this is what we're working with here so uh, now if you see, let's get our parts out. I had it together wrong before. Sorry if somebody was ready to like just jump through the screen and scream at me. It would kind of fit inside each other like like that. So let's zoom in a little bit. I think they kind of could see in there. They kind of are sitting inside each other in this fashion. So this is the, when you're pulling the trigger, that's how you, that's the sear that you're separating from there. I suppose, I don't gotta really get it apart to look. This is a pin, trigger pin. It's good that the guy included the pin because sometimes this could be worn a little bit more and, and it make, and it's sloppy, you know what I mean? So it's good, it's good to have the pin. If he's punching it out, he's got the pin anyway. So, um, and then you can see that if this is sitting here like that, that this is the piece that goes up underneath that spring here, under there. So um, it's just a little bit of a pain to get this out. You can look at videos. There's a guy that does a complete disassembly where he shows how how this comes apart. It's all easy till you get to hear this, like a very very small pin. I don't know if you could see it in there. Yeah, you could see that in this the threaded area there. It's like a tiny pin, and that needs to come out in order to be able to remove, you know, this whole assembly here and the hammer. So, like I said, I'm not going to bore you and sit here on camera. Besides, it's, I have such a close-up view here, and I'll be moving around to do this. So, let me just get to the next step. I'm going to remove the um, what I need to remove from here to get the hammer and the trigger out. And also, what we're going to do is, at the same time, we're going to take these parts and we're going to uh, we're going to take some gun scrubber and we're going to uh, get these parts in a little plastic tray, spray them down, uh, brush, pick, we'll clean them. And um, also, I got in here, this is interesting, it's where the round gets fed from in here was dirty down in the bottom there I hadn't even noticed it in my initial cleaning when I bought this so it was good to get in there and clean all of that gunk out of there that was nice I never realized how dirty that was there's a lot of lead deposits in there so that's where we're at I'll see you at the uh next step Alrighty, so man it took forever to get this little teeny pin out that uh that holds this guy in and this is in turn what goes through the main body of the action here to hold all these pieces together. Man, what a pain in the ass. All right, let's let's zoom in here. I think I I think I do see what could potentially have been an issue here. Which would be here's the old one. And here's the here's this these are the old pieces and these are the new pieces. So Let's just remove these from the equation because those don't look like there's anything wrong with them. But this, I see a discernible difference here. I see right here in this area, I see the higher higher ridge there than here, which looks worn down and more flat and that could be why it's slipping off of there 
You see that difference? Let's see if I could orientate this right. There we go. You could clearly see it there. That this this ridge that's right inside here is missing right here. So now uh, reassembly, and um, I guess I shouldn't mix and match. I guess I should just use just discard both of these and use this the sear that matched up with this originally. Uh, all right, try to get this back together. All right, here we go with the new one installed now. Look at this. Would you believe even messing with this, trying to remove that pin I busted off the tip of this guy? Unbelievable. That was like wrestling. Sometimes the smallest parts are the toughest, strongest brain destroyers. Um, so here we go. Uh, this is the spring installed here, and then this is a tensioner spring. Let me just... Uh, before I do the test run, because I have not even checked it yet. I just installed these parts. You're with me here now on this. Let me just put a little... This is a tensioner. A tensioner spring. See, what that does is it kind of loads up this guy. So let's just see. That feels nice. That's exactly how much it should have. And pulling the trigger does drop the hammer. Here we go. Now here's the boot true test. Half cock. If I pull the trigger here and it falls, we're in the same place we were before. Oh yeah, baby. We have a functional half cock position now. That's what it was. So what it was was, this was worn. This here was worn. Should be a catch there and see how I could just slip right off. That's what was happening. And I guess it was only a matter of time before it would start slipping weird off the not half cock but the full cock position. And that, see, that's the problem. That's why with sears and things like that, especially with these old guns, you guys got to realize. I mean, you really got to be on top of that. That that this parts like this could get worn and you could be carrying the gun with the hammer, you know, back. And just dropping it or banging it into a tree or maybe even something even less than that. Maybe even just a slight tap on it can, can set that hammer off because of something like this, like a worn sear. You know, so before you're ever going to carry these things around loaded in like a compromising situation like hunting or something like that where you're not just plinking and you always have it downrange and... You know what I mean? Like, you you got to really trust the gun and make sure. Just a simple part like that. So that hammer and sear is, is done. And, uh, yeah, here we are. We have... We now have a half cock position. And then this... This here is working right. Like I said, in here, if you have one of these, get in there and clean that out with, like, a pick or whatever. Get way back in here. There's like some serious lead deposits down into the in there that I didn't even see. So uh, let's do the final reassembly. Here's the pain in the ass, man. This thing. See this teeny hole here had this this ultra tiny little pin in there. And man, getting that thing out, I had to use a a nail like this because I don't even have a drift. I don't even have a punch that small, you know. But the problem is that when I was pushing it out, it was contacting the edge of this instead of it having clearance to go through. So I had to, I had to get in there with something. I, was, I have tons of tools like this that I was just trying to get in there and just grab it and wrench it out. And I finally was able to get enough bite to get it out of there. I don't know if I should put in the same piece or... I don't even think you need to put anything in there. You just have to be careful when you take the gun apart that all of this doesn't fall apart. But you could probably just send this in here and then it just won't be captured anymore in here. Like this, it'll be, when you take it down, it'll just unscrew all the way out. It might be better to just leave it like that or, or put like your own little piece of wire in here. Maybe I'll see if I got something very thin that could go in there that's 
not going to drive me up the freaking wall. <laughs> we'll check it out. Anyway, I'll uh, see you on the next step. One thing I thought would be interesting to add after uh, kind of like slicking this thing down, making sure there's no rust is going to happen inside here. Uh, there's a 609 here on the Tang. And uh, if you notice, it's not the same as the serial number. And this serial number doesn't match the the uh, receiver. So this this trigger group, this isn't really a true serial number. The, am I correct about that? Yes, the receiver has a different serial number. So these were, this wasn't the original trigger group for this gun. However, there's a 609 back here, and this tang is integral with this. It's actually on the same part. So I'm like, what is this 609? Interestingly enough, there's a 609. I don't know if you can see it, but it's inside the wood under the top tang here. So what's interesting there is that the wood seems to match the trigger guard, but you wouldn't know that by the serial number. It seems to be like an assembly number. Interesting, right? All right, well, maybe you could stick with me here through the rest of this assembly. Let's get, get this together. Mm -hmm. Never want to go too crazy with these screws that only hold on stocks. You're not, uh, you know, holding metal parts together there, so just a simple snug will do. And then what? What else? Why am I drawing blanks here? Yeah, so this, so what I figured is here, like, I took a paper clip, right? I took a paper clip and just cut a piece off of that because the paper clip fits perfectly through this hole. So I'm just going to bend back and use a piece of paper clip, but I wanted to do just a full assembly and test just in case I had to go back in again. I didn't want to have to go through that again. So always think ahead. Make some room here. Sorry. All right. There you go. That's exactly where I wanted that on the floor. So now let's reassemble here. Now, like I said, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if every time I put it together. I just uh, screwed it together, and then when I wanted it, how, I mean, how often is it really going to come apart? So now, let's check function. We definitely have a hammer drop. And half cock. Nice. Yep. We fixed it. So that's that. I'll leave you guys here. Um, I do like to... Uh, after I've been <clears throat> inside, inside the gun, I don't like to leave anything dry because I did gun scrub these parts. So uh, I like to just have everything wet inside. And next time I take it apart, I'll give it a nice wipe down. But just, uh, there we go. The Winchester now has a nice half cock position for safety. So that's the moral of the story is if you're going to buy one of these on eBay, if you have this problem and you're going to buy one of these on eBay, the spot you're going to have to pay attention to is going to be right here. This is the edge. So this will engage. This will engage like this. See? And the, pulling the trigger is it, it's slipping off like that instead of it hooking in. Whereas you see here, maybe that was the half cock position. Let me see where would this be? Ooh. I'm not really sure. No, I guess this would be the half cock position, and it's slipping off. Whereas the other one, it, it had like a hook, it definitely hooked in. It was like a hook to hook. Oh, I see, and this one, it's supposed to slip off here. 
and wouldn't it get caught on there for the half cock position? Man, you'd really have to you really have to be paying attention to the mechanics inside there, and I wasn't. But anyway, that's that. I'm gonna get it back together with this little pin in there to hold the screw so it's still captured. And the problem is solved. So thanks for hanging out with me through this. Uh, I'm gonna put some tools away and possibly do another video on uh, 22. I know I promised one on the weekend that I didn't do it, and today's Monday, so this wasn't officially a video on a new gun. I think I'm gonna have to uh, put everything away, clear the table, get out some notes, and post away. So I'm gonna edit this down, watch a little TV, and we'll see what happens. But uh, thanks for hanging with me through this, and uh, any questions on uh, you know this process? Feel free to uh, ask, and uh, any insight, feel free to enlighten us. Thanks.